Alright, welcome back everybody. Next episode of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. We are back with the next dreadful crime. Next stop, murder. Solve the mystery of the body found on the banks of the Thames. Alright. Let's do it. Let's see what this one's all about. Hey! Someone help! Some trap found something down there! Looks like foul play! Hmm, yes. Okay. So let's take a look at the body. Uh, male body dressed in the manner of a wealthy businessman. He is wearing only one shoe. The man has sustained multiple fractures indicating a fall from a great height. There are no identifying documents. Hmm. For all the clues, quick. I see one. I don't see follow up though. Maybe I have to run it closer to this. Impact. Okay, so he fell from up there, which means I have to go up there. After I take a look at this, a rich man's coat with the name sewed in the lining. Matthew Killian. Well, no. I didn't ask about this. So this guy took his coat. Nice. I heard a splash, and right quick pulled this bloke out of the shallows. Dead as a mackerel. I live there now, if you can call it living. I lost my job, didn't I? No need for the likes of me when a machine can do the work. Damn. A nice warm coat like that on a dead man? What do you expect? I snatched it before somebody else came along to nick it. Like you. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Eh. Can we go up? No. Damn. This'll work, I suppose. Pocket watch, broken silver watch. The hands have stopped just after. I wonder minutes. if someone could tell me more about this. Okay. Oh, can I talk to that guy again? Look. Oh, not what I expected you to do. But I respect it. The midnight train. That must be the 616. Stops in the station down the road. If you hurry, it might still be there. Oh shit, you're putting a timer on me? Oh, fuck. Sorry. I'm yawning. Move it! Yeah, move it. I got somewhere to be, guys. Wait. Fuck, okay. We go into the train station. I don't think there's actually a timer on it, but we shall see. I hate it when they put these things so far apart from each other, though. It's like they're trying to meet a time quota for each of these, pissing me off. This guy? Yep. You better hurry. It's leaving right now. How the fuck do I get there? The very best of luck. It was a typical evening. As far as I knew. Nothing unusual happened until you came aboard with this story of a murder. I was tidying up in the passenger car. Around midnight, Vivian ran through. She thought someone was looking for her. Hmm. Just another wealthy passenger. 
They're all pretty much the same. That's fair. Pamphlets. Down with the industrialists, down with the monarchy. Revolution is the only way. Uh, an article about Matthew Killian's efforts to close an enormous business deal in Wales. It noted that Killian is well known for replacing workers with machinery. There is a likeness of Killian in the paper which matches the victim. We already knew his name was Killian, but okay. Uh, a small box of sleeping pills. It is half I empty. Go back and ask about this. That guy? These guys. Okay. Nothing unusual. A couple of passengers came in and had a sort of business meeting. One of them was buying a lot of drinks for the other, and then they started to argue. But Vivian went over and joshed them out of it. Oh, uh, well, it's a noisy train. Plenty of passengers have trouble getting to sleep, so I keep sedative here behind the bar, yeah? Uh-huh. Peter, nice bloke. What the came fuck? here after being sacked from a foundry a few months ago. I tell you, he looked white as a ghost after he served the businessman. Oh, Peter. God ding boys. Some noises on the roof woke me up briefly. You say someone was thrown from up there. You have to be a very strong fella to drag someone up onto the roof. Vivian had yeah. another of her dupes in her compartment by then. After that, I remember people going past me from time to time, but I was half asleep. Killian was on this train. Cool. I used to work in his foundry. I never even seen him. None of us workers ever knew what he looked like. Well, Peter worked with me at the foundry. He's a very strong bloke. I got my arm mangled in one of the damn machines they put in. Then Killian sacked the old crew. Peter, he helped me get hired as train staff. Mm. Everything's kind of pointing Peter right now. I have to go above. I think I have to go above. Oh, a shoe. Caught on a bolt at the top of the carriage. Is a shoe matching the one? Okay. Cool. Angus Wolf. In the dining car with Killian. We had business dealings in the past. It was a pleasant surprise to discover him on this train. I felt unusually tired and came back here to get some sleep. I suppose there were some disagreements, but there always are when a great deal of money is involved. Sleeper one letter. Killian will be on the 616 train to Cardiff to sign the papers. You must prevent him from signing them at all costs or we shall be ruined. Hmm. A gun, too. Derringer. A small ivory plated Derringer. Chamber for two bullets, but one is missing. Okay. Mr. Sam. Had a few with Mr. Killian. Then the young lady invited herself over to have a glass with them. Mr. Wolf became terribly tired, even though he'd only had one drink. He toddled off to bed well before midnight. I stayed in the dining car for a few drinks with the barman. Mr. Wolf bought him drink after drink. Then they got angry. But a young lady came over, and it's obvious that Mr. Killian was interested in a rendezvous like. Around about 11.30, Killian and her left together. A rendezvous I've been like? Uh -huh. for going on several years. He's frail and needs a man like me to help him about. Okay. So he gave everybody sleeping pills. Sam, he's a trusted valet. He's terrifically strong, which makes him useful in many situations. So he's strong. But he might just, I don't know, might not be him at all. He didn't really seem to have a big reason. Anyways, contains a letter. How goes it, Viv? 
uh, hook any more fish. It's a lovely caper you've got going. I need to find me a Bonnie scheme like that. Let's have a glass next time you're in Soho of your sis. I wonder oh. if someone could tell me more about this. Oh, so she is a business of sleeping with people for money. Okay. Handwritten note. Come to the restaurant carriage quickly. I should return and find out about this. Well, maybe not like a prostitute, but maybe she might That's take them to the cleaners. I had a drink with some gents and then retired to my sleeper. Someone slipped a note under my sleeper door a few minutes before midnight. It said I should come to the dining car. I went, but only Ryan and Wolf's man were there, and they were both drunk. The rich fella. I did talk with him. Very charming. But a single woman has to be careful, you know? Did something happen to him? Oh, all right. I flirt with rich blokes and the barman slips them a mickey. I take them back to my sleeper and they nod off before I have to do anything shameful. <laughs> they wake up thinking they had a night of fun and hand me a few quid. That's what happened with Mr. Killian, but he was gone when I come back from looking for the man who left the note. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. Gotta go back and talk to everybody again. You mean the young lady? She and Killian hit it off famously. Embarrassing, really. Okay. Our Spectre hustle. That one. Clever little minx. She and the bombman got a little scam going. I think everyone on the staff knows about it. So it's perfect time. She's Ryan. a frequent passenger, that one. Hangs about with the wealthier sort. Likes to entertain them, if you take my meaning. Yeah, no, I got now you. I help Vivian fleece the dupes. I slipped a pill in the wine to the table. Both gents got sleepy, but Vivian picked the richest one. What's this guy's name again? Oh, this is Peter. She okay. rides a train often. She's very friendly with the other passengers. I think it's Peter. He's upset that he lost his job, and he's supposedly dumb strong. Like, he has reasons for doing it. Or it's the other guy that's really strong, but it, it has to be someone that's strong. And people told... There was a letter that basically said we need to stop this deal from happening. Um, and he would know. The other guy's just a valet. This guy would know about the sleeping pills and know when to go. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's Peter. I do. I gave him what he deserved. Aha! The man was heartless. Fucking smart. That was a relatively quick one, to be honest. I believe something larger is afoot. A lot of murderous anger concerning industrialists. Might be something to look into. Cool. Industrious, industrialist Matthew Killian was drugged and thrown from the top of a moving train by his former employee, Peter Jespers. Put out of work by the mechanization of Killian's factory, Peter found employment as a humble train steward. However, one evening, Peter realized that Killian was on his very train prior to his journey. Prior to this journey, Peter had never seen Killian, but now recognized him from a recent newspaper article. Peter, knowing that uh, Peter, knowing that frequent passenger Vivian often swindled wealthy fellow passengers, waited until she lured Killian to her compartment. He cunningly arranged for her to be called away by means of an anonymous note. Peter then used his considerable strength to lift the drugged the drugged magnet and drag him to the top of the train once he threw him to his death at midnight. Killian's rival, Angus Wolf, had hoped to get Killian so inebriated as to prevent him from participating at a business meeting on the following day, but Wolf himself fell afoul of the drugged brandy and slept through the entire episode. As for Peter the murderer, perhaps he meted out justice. In turn, he will not meet justice himself. Okay. Yeah, no, that uh, that all adds up. We got there.
like it. Okay, uh, we're only at 15 minutes, so we might just do them. So I'm, if we can get there in time. Uh, yeah. How many are left? We can't have that many left. What's this one called? The most hated man in London. Ah. Steric. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So we'll do the next one. It might make the video be like 45 minutes long, but oh well. Okay. Now, get here. Everything you need to survive the. Oh, you also have a pleasant day, sir. I don't know where I'm running. Carriage? This place is so barren. Give me transportation after I murder these people. Oh, well, I got the wrong one. Well, I got them both. I just gave up. How my friend died in front of me. I shall walk away like I was not associated with him at all. Come on. all right, let's go. Destroy, destroy everything. I just missed like everything. Perfect. The most hated man in London. Love it. Deduce which of all the potential murderers actually killed Ashen. Oh shit, okay. Sounds like he got uh got beat up on. Think of that. Crushed by a crate. The most hated man in London. Crushed by a crate. Can you imagine achieving such a title? One day my brilliance will bring me similar recognition. Yeah, something Mr. like Ray. that. What's important is that this man was oh. hated by many. So who gave the last blow? That's what we care about here. Like I just said it. Holy people. Oh, there we go. Maybe? Oh, now we're here. The body has been crushed by the crate, but close inspection reveals other anomalies. A puncture wound to the gut, a bullet wound in the back, and the victim's skin has an odd green pallor along with yellowing around the eyes. Inspection of the bullet wound indicates that such a wound would cause death in 12 minutes. Oh, okay. Sure, dude. We're gonna have to do some math. I know the man. He's hated by everyone. Surprisingly, it's not clear what killed him. I find multiple wounds. No need to send many people to jail for killing such a terrible man. What say you only arrest the single person who actually caused his death? Mm hmm Okay. He appears to have been stabbed with a perforating weapon, perhaps a spike of some kind. There would be bleeding, and it would affect motor control right away, but death wouldn't come for another six minutes. I suspect that there is at least one deadly toxin in his system. Okay. So he was stabbed, poisoned, stabbed, and shot. The bullet is 12 minutes. The puncture wound is six. Path that John Ashton took before he died. Obviously, yeah. So we have to follow that path back after we take a look at this stuff. His book, uh, his agenda. He went to the pharmacy, the pub, pharmacy, then the pub, the apple in the household account all within 10 minutes okay uh broken pocket watch inscribed john ashen stopped at 117 precisely okay so he died at 117 with this Pub is the first place that something could. Well, the pharmacy. Oh, so he went. He probably got poisoned at the pharmacy. 
Then he got shot at the pub. Then he got stabbed at some point. Mm, out of those match the 11, 117. I investigate the crate. There we go. Appears to have fallen from overhead crane onto Ashton. This poor guy. Fuck. Why was he so hated? Let's take a look at this. I don't think I found the last. Did I find the last thing? Maybe I did. I don't know. Um, a huge coal-powered crane. The driver, the driving mechanism is complex and requires an expert operator. I believe I should reinterrogate a suspect. Okay. Right. There's two. Ah. Here you are, you little shit. Uh, please contribute to the benefit fund for the man who had his arm crushed. Any help will be much appreciated. I should go back okay. and ask about this. The man's a right bastard. I hope he's smoldering in hell. Okay. I'm not a crane operator. I wouldn't know how to work there. My best chum is made for life, and Ashton didn't care a fig. He deserved what happened. Beyond that, I'm mum. The fuck does I'm mum mean? He owned this site and paid us. We all hated him because he looked for any excuse to cheat us out of our wages. Oh, I see. I didn't hate him any more or less than my mates. That's around the time I'm given a few minutes to eat something. About then I would have been buying myself an apple at the stand down the street. It's difficult to work properly. You'd have to know what you're doing to drop it at just the right moment. Eddie? Yeah. I told him how to work the crane a few days ago. Oh. Did you know? Yeah, he knows how to he lied. He doesn't know how to work it. Okay. Is there did I miss something? No, I got the last one here. Okay. Let's run to the apple stand. Holy shit, there's some stuff there. So stumbles pushed. Huh, okay. Has a single bite taken out of it. The inside of the apple is oddly pink. Hmm. So, let's go here. Sells apples daily on the street at 109. Bet. He stopped by here every day at the exact same time. He'd buy an apple and try to cheat me out of tuppence. But then most folks do that. Yeah, that sounds right. Came by for an apple. He was there when we heard the crate hit the ground. Oh, Frank was here when the crate. Okay, so Eddie might have done it. He's my husband. Each day I bring him the household expenses just after he eats his apple. I also brought him his invitation to the knighthood ceremony, the one with the special scepter. Of course, he wasn't going to take me on. Mm. I often tie up my hair around a knitting needle. What business is it of yours? Knitting needle would do nicely for stabbing. So, he was stumbled, pushed, which means... Okay, okay, okay. So he bought an apple, argued with his wife... And after that minute passes, he seems stumbled and pushed at 111. Meaning, six minutes later, he got crushed by the crane. But, 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 with the stabbing, he had six minutes to live. And the knitting needle would be perfect. There's also... Apple was probably poisoned by the apple seller. But would that have... Oh, shit. There's like a... Oh, look at the timing. He was there at 113. Hold on. I, I didn't see all these timing things. 
114, and then 117. Yeah, okay. I don't know what, what the 14 and stuff has to do with that, but okay. So right now, I think that Eddie guy dropped the, the thing on him at 117, but that's at the same time he would be dead from the stabbing from his wife. There's no shot she didn't stab him. Ow, you mother. Okay, he went to the pub. Oh, hello. Stumbles, splattered blood. But with the gunshot, he had 12 minutes, so he wouldn't be dead from this gunshot. But we're still gonna take a look. Enters pub, and he leaves pub at 107. What the fuck? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There must be some explanation. Includes an interesting article. Hendrix Refinery brought to a halt. Apparent sabotage has destroyed machinery at Lawrence Kendrick's at Lawrence Hendrick's foundry. Rumors circulating imply that industrialist John Ashton is behind behind the sabotage of his competitor. Well, you know that makes sense based off of how this guy seems to operate. A Webley Boxer Revolver. One chamber's oh, no. empty. I didn't ask about okay. this. So he did get shot here. But the timing doesn't add up. Ashton stops in front of this pub every afternoon to check on business rumors. Something of a bastard, Ashton. Told me he had a bit of jam on the side, if you know what I mean. Why well, I didn't know about it. Well, the bit of jam wants out, but he won't let her. That's the sort of fellow we're speaking of. Hmm. That was Ashton's doing. The man had it in for me. He paid workers to wreck my machines. Cost me a fortune. As long as he was around, I'd never prosper. All right. As a matter of fact, I do carry a revolver at all times. It can be a dangerous neighborhood for a wealthy fella such as myself. This proves nothing. I mean, that's fair. But also, he definitely has a reason. Okay, so we have to go to the pharmacy. Okay, so nothing's really popping up. A uh, medicine box of Ashen's pres prescription with a few remaining blue pills. He must have dropped it along the way. Okay, takes pills. Discards box. Empty medicine box. We left at 102. There. Uh, pharmaceutical cabinet contains chemicals labeled warning not to be ingested. Chemical one is a bluish in color and is listed as causing erratic movements after 10 minutes and death after an additional 16 minutes. So 26 minutes. Uh, causes jaundice around the eyes and has an extreme anesthetic effect. It's pinkish in color and is listed as causing erratic move. So it's not the blue, right? But chemical two is pinkish in color and is listed as causing erratic movement after two minutes and death after an additional nine minutes. Yields a green tint to skin. Okay, so he had both. The apple had the pink in it. And he would have died 11 minutes later. But... Both of them add up after the time that he died. So everybody poisoned him, but these guys were not last. I see him here every day. He can be unpleasant, but I don't really know him. Okay. He's been coming to me for years. He arrives precisely at one o'clock and leaves two minutes later. He takes a bluish medication every day and prefers that I administer it. I mean, there he is, a trusted assistant. As far as I know, she's completely above board. Today, she swept the shop and prepared some medications. She also fetched herself an apple from the apple stand. <laughs> okay. So, she did poison them, but... Wasn't last. Both of those timings don't add up. So, nor was the sh did the shot add up. So, it's either the construction site 
or the wife's stabbing. Girl who works at the pharmacy? Yeah, she slipped me an extra thruppence. She had a special app just for Mr. Ashton. I gave him that one when he come by. Okay. Was that not everything? I'm confused. Oh. I think they make me run back to the pharmacy? Are you fucking kidding me? Okay. He poisoned them, but it's not enough time. Again. But we'll go talk and see what she has to say. Quite right. I asked the apple seller to give him a special apple. Is that a crime? He was a horrid man. That's all I have to say. So you kill him? Nah, that's fucked up. I have to go back to the apple stand? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so this man was dead for sure today. Everybody decided that. I don't know why that's something to say. Very well. Oh, I found out about his dalliance with that girl from the pharmacy. It's not the first. Divorce is all but impossible given his influence with the clergy. Okay. Interesting thing to say. <sighs> it's either the white. Right? Stumbles pushed. Right at 111. I gave him six minutes, so 117, he was dead. But also at 117, the crate fell on him. They want me to run back to the pharmacy real quick? No shot, these guys are making me sprint around like this. Are they? No, there's. Did I miss something at the pharmacy? I think I did. Wasn't there another... I think I missed something at the pharmacy. Yeah, I'm missing a clue here. Yeah, hello, hello, hello. Uh, letter addressed to Thomas Reese, pharmacist. Tom, my dear brother, I have recently made a most upsetting discovery. The man who forced the foreclosure of the family farm was no other than John Ashton, your very client. His behavior in this affair is beyond indecent. Both father and mother are reduced to penury. You and I both must contribute all we can, although we each have obligations of our own. At the very least, you must cease to do business with now this dreadful man. This, I should ask more questions. Yeah, he definitely poisoned him. Literally everybody this killed this guy. Business. He came to me for his blue medication. I gave him blue medication. Yeah. Is that everything then? It's not popping up that that's everything. Am I missing something at the apple stand? Oh my god! Again? Granted, this this last trek over to the pharmacy was my fault. <clears throat> so the wife has something more to say again? Oh, no, she does. Mr. Ashton did look strange like. Eyes all yellowish. And then he turned pale after he bit into the apple. Almost green, really. Hmm. Okay. It's, I think it's the wife. She definitely stabbed him. Or the guy dropped the crane because he lied and said that he didn't know how to do it. The wife has much more of a reason to do it though. Of course, an expert operator. Okay, so it's Eddie or Mrs. Ashton. Uh, um. Seems pleased that he's dead. Uh, shit. Was it was Frank the other one? Yeah. Owned the worksite and pays that they or claims that they all hated him for cheating them out of their proper wages. 
is difficult to operate. Only someone trained could drop a crate at precisely the right moment. But I swear, didn't he say that he trained Eddie? I mean, if you just look at this stuff, it's not him. You'd think they put it in here if that really mattered. I think it's the wife then. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's one last thing that we need to care about. Um, It's not the bullet wound. Puncture wound to the gut. Uh, hold on, hold on. It was the doctor. The doctor. Multiple wounds. I swear it said something about... Was... Was I wrong? They said six minutes for... Didn't they? Where did, did I miss that? I thought I thought this this stabbing from his wife hit like a nerve center or something that gave him like six minutes precisely now if the timing of the crane is difficult that probably happened after right kind of same moment but it gave him like a little bit of leeway time because he probably fell dead before the crane hit he appears to have been stabbed with a perforating weapon perhaps a spike of some kind there would be bleeding, and it would affect motor control right away, but death wouldn't come for another six minutes. Affect motor control. That's making me think it's the wife. Right? You see how he's walking? Like, whoa. I think they dropped it. After he died. I think it's the wife. I really do. I, th I think it's the wife. I think she killed him to get out. She also has much more of a reason to kill him. Let's do it. I'll be the toast of the town. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> now she's popular because fellow. of it. But what was that business about a knighthood ceremony? Up to the clink with you. In any case, Mr. Raymond will have a story for Perlock Publishing. Cool. Wealthy business owner John Ashton was murdered not once, but five times. So hated was he that his business rival, his employee, his wife, his mistress, and his pharmacist all made attempts on his life. Poisoned, shot, stabbed, and finally crushed, Ashton came to a very gruesome end indeed. Damn. Indeed, the most hated man in London. I think the crane thing is the one that set it off. That one could, it could go either way on that one, I think. Now, how many more of these do we have? Because we gotta be close. Oh, that is not what I'm... We have... Uno mas. One last one. Um, where's it even at? Over here. Oh, murder at the palace. Sweet. This is gonna be a cool last one. So, uh, we're actually gonna end it here, and we will do this next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I hope you have a good rest of your day, night, whatever it is, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.